so honestly, I, I, un I just don't know what to say. Um, this is the most invested, the most excited I've been for new episodes of The Flash since probably early season three. Like, I still really enjoyed Armageddon. I thought some of the stuff they were doing in Armageddon was really good. But this is the most I've been enjoying The Flash since early Season 3. And it honestly makes me a little annoyed how, like, mediocre so much of Season 8 has been. Like, I thought a lot of the middle episodes of Season 8 have been just really, really, really mediocre. Never exactly terrible, but never good. Just very much middle of the road. And it annoys me because episodes like this or arcs like this really showcase that they do have the ability to make fantastic television when they really do try and do that. So honestly just props to Flash, props to everybody on the Flash because they've they've really made me love this show again in a way that I have not in years. And um, I didn't get to make a review on last week's episode because I was so busy but I also absolutely loved last week's episode. There's little things annoying me in both episodes. Um, which huge spoiler alert if you haven't seen last week or this week. I guess I'm nervous about what is happening with David Ramsey's Diggle. I'm nervous about what's happening with Matt Letcher's Eobard Thawne after this week's episode. But it's things that the scenes themselves and the way that they were done was so, so, so good that it's kind of hard for me to be annoyed about the things that happened. Like with the Diggle thing, I am worried that they just got rid of the Green Lantern stuff in such kind of a a very a very hand wavy way and that it feels like maybe they were never planning on doing Green Lantern stuff and now they've just gotten rid of it or that maybe somebody stepped in from above and decided that they couldn't do Green Lantern stuff anymore but um I've got my fingers crossed that this is that's just set up for something coming later and that we're not done with Green Lantern stuff and with Matt Letcher's Thawne possibly being done I know a lot of people are annoyed about that I would feel the same way, but I'm not convinced we're done with them. I feel like while this version of Matt Letcher's Thawne might be gone, I think we still are going to see that origin of Eobard Thawne using Matt Letcher in Flash Season 9 at some point. If we don't get that yet, this is going to be a little bit annoying in hindsight. But at the moment, I'm trying to stay positive and that they have a plan for these things and it's not just getting rid of them. Um... But yeah, the show is just, it's really, really, really brought it back for me. I want to give huge shout out to the new character, Mina, because I feel like she's a, she's breathing new life into the show. She's a very different character to what we've had before. She's a very kind of fresh new character um, that I really do enjoy. And I think that she is already kind of giving this feeling of a fresh to the show that we haven't had in a while I would like season 9 to go in this direction where we get a few more new characters in that are like Mina and that they're very interesting they're very different and they're just kind of like bringing fresh into the show because I feel like the show has gotten a little stale lately I feel like the the routine we had in season 7 and 8 it's kind of at that point where I would like us to move away from it that we've had that so many times and it's also just not really working so I think that bringing Mina in and possibly bringing more characters in is going to be great for the show going forward um and then let's talk about that iris thing real quick i have heard that apparently candace Patton is still confirmed to be returning uh in the future of the show so i don't think iris is dead i mean iris is barry allen's lowest link you know you can't really kill iris in the main timeline and expect it to, to stay the way it is so i think um I think it, it was probably never a plan to kill Iris for good. It's the same thing as like they tried doing this in season 3 of the show where they were killing Iris but then she was back. It's a thing, you don't kill Barry, you don't kill Iris West for Barry Allen kind of thing. Um, not in like the main part of the show. I do though really like the idea of what they did with it. I think that it was a really interesting storytelling point. Because now we have Mina losing her love, we have Barry losing his love. And I think it's going to be really interesting to go forward and have this kind of thing in the next episode where Barry and Mina are so angry that they're borderline villains kind of thing. I want to see that. I want to see Barry just absolutely lose it. Because other than like Savitar Barry, I don't think we've seen full on Barry Allen, like Earth Prime main Barry Allen go basically evil. Like I want him to kind of embrace his inner Oliver Queen and be like, this needs to be done. I need to kill Thawne finally. Finally. I would like to see that so much. Uh, and I think that uh, we've already sort of seen Evil Mina from last episode. And now that she doesn't have kind of Eobard to calm her down, I could see her easily switching to kind of the negative evil sort of stuff. And I want to see I want to see that from Barry as well. I think that that would be a really interesting thing to do. Um, talk about last episode for a second. I want to shout out that it was honestly 
very unexpected that they did not announce David Ramsey and Brandon Routh returning beforehand. They just kind of appeared in the episode and it was like this big surprise thing. And I just want to shout out how, how happy that makes me feel that they would do something like that. Because with the CW in the past, it's always been something where they have to announce a character beforehand or they have to kind of release promo pictures about a returning character. They've done it with Eobard twice this year. When he showed up in Legends, they had to spoil it in pro promotional pictures. And then when he returned in the Flash last week, they had to spoil it in the promo for the, the week's episode. Whereas with Diggle and Ray, they just showed up like... There was no announcement beforehand. There was no spoiling in promotional pictures or promo videos. Uh, and I really did like that they did that. It gives me hope that they can kind of continue doing that in the future now. And we don't have to worry about kind of every little big thing getting spoiled before the episode even comes out. Um, but David Ramsey's scene with Eobard, it was fantastic. I absolutely loved the conversation between the two characters. And, I, and it's it's so interesting as well. Because it's like, it's Tom Cavanagh's Eobard Thawne having a conversation about... Green Lantern stuff with John Diggle from Arrow in a Lee and you prison. Like, that's just something that is so unexpected. It's something I love about the Arrowverse. They can do dynamics like that that you wouldn't really expect to see. And it's on an episode of The Flash as well. So even like this was back in the day on Arrow. This is on a Flash. It's so cool that they could do that. Uh, I also love that Eobard was reading Count of Monte Cristo, which was the book that Oliver read when he was in prison. Uh, I, I know that's kind of a thing where it's like, it's a book about a prison. So it makes sense that, you know, to always put that as a little Easter egg in all sorts of TV shows or prison things. But I still thought it was a cool little tie-in. Um, but I, I did really like that. I, I think J John's got a really cool look lately. Like, the look he has going for him is so badass. I love it. I love the kind of, he talked about how he was prioritizing his family and stuff like that. And the soundtrack was so good and everything was so good about it. But like I said, I hope that this is not, we're done with the Green Lantern stuff. If this is them getting rid of the Green Lantern stuff already... I would go as far to say that this might be the most annoying thing that the Arrowverse has ever done to fans, um, because like they were hyping, that they've been hyping this up for two years now. It's we you can't say that oh well they never promised us Green Lantern like yeah they did you know they've been teasing this since Elseworlds basically, uh, so for them to constantly revisit this and then to get rid of it that's a bit of a bit of a slap in the face to fans. So I I think that they definitely need to remedy this somehow and like even if it is you know wb coming down from above and saying that they can't use green lantern stuff i still think something needs to be done so that it doesn't end here because as well as that this does kind of feel like a goodbye scene to diggle like the way the whole scene was done felt like we were almost saying goodbye to the character and if there was no green lantern stuff i would say that this was a really good exit for the character but we already know that he's going to actually be in superman and lois next week in the season three final setting up superman or season two final sorry setting up superman and lois season three so we already know diggle's coming back so like it's not like he's gone but um this did kind of feel like it was a goodbye to the character i want to talk about something that i'm not too crazy about that they're currently doing and that is what they're doing with cecile now cecile has always kind of been a character i haven't been crazy but i mean I didn't mind her in the early seasons when she was kind of just the DA who would show up every now and then. But when they brought her in, started giving her more and more things in the show, and she started getting more and more screen time, I was like, okay, I don't know why we're doing this, but all right. Um, then they gave her the powers, and they had her constantly reading people's minds without asking them or without consent to do that. And I was like, I don't like this because they're showing Cecile doing something that is borderline a villain move and they're playing it off as, oh, it's okay, it's fine, don't worry about it. Um, and now they've just kind of gone further with that. Now she's stealing other people's powers and they're still playing it off as, no, it's fine, she's not a villain. Like, literally, that's what the Thinker did. The, the Thinker stole powers, that's what made him a villain. And now Cecile is doing that same thing where we're supposed to be like, no, it's fine, don't worry about it. Um, on top of that, she's getting so much more screen time than so many other characters on the show. And I think, honestly, Cecile might be my biggest problem with the show. Like, the one thing that I don't like the most is Cecile. Uh, it's kind of weird that they just gave her a leather jacket. Like, right now she's got a superhero costume. Now she's a superhero. I don't know. I just don't really think that what they're doing with the character has ever really worked. And I think that they're just making it worse now. It's kind of frustrating. Um, I'm, I just, I personally do hope that they kind of move past the character in season 9. I mean, you know, the show's probably only going to get season 9. I don't think they're going to get rid of Cecile before the final season. I think Cecile's here till the end now. But she is probably the one thing I don't like the most about the show at the moment. And that's kind of annoying to say. Especially since so much of the show lately is dedicated to her. But, um, it is a little bit, a little bit frustrating for me. 
I want to talk about Mina's fast track costume because it looks so cool. Right, now the cowl is a bit weird. The cowl reminds me of like Ryan Choi's Adam cowl, which also isn't the best looking. But the costume without the cowl looks fantastic. I would go as far as to say that that's like a top 10 Arrowverse costume. I think it, it, it not only does it step out of the comics, but it just looks so good. I think it really does suit. Um, it looks so high quality as well. Uh, like the, the black lightning bits that they have coming out of her don't look the best the white lighting looks fine but the costume itself i absolutely love it i also love that when matt returned he got the older eobard costume back rather than the new eobard costume uh, i think it was a good way to kind of differentiate tom's eobard from matt's eobard like when we have matt's eobard we have that older costume and with matt's eobard we have the new one um now i want to talk about the forces real quick because they were a huge issue for me back in season seven i thought they were not only was their arc in season seven the worst that the show has ever been, but I didn't think the characters themselves were that great. I honestly thought they were really improved this episode. I think that um, like Dion was always probably the coolest or the best of the forces in season seven, but Bashir and Alexa, I thought that they were really, really, really improved. I think that um, it might have just been the pacing of this episode, but I thought that they just were much better this time around than they were in season seven they felt much more threatening they felt much more well written they felt even more well acted i thought um but speaking of the pacing i think that the pacing of this episode and last episode was so good it felt like honestly i would say that it feels kind of like a streaming show's pacing where we're kind of doing scenes but the whole episode isn't revolving around one specific plot line like there's so many things happening in the episode and we might only revisit one thing we might only visit one thing once but then we'll see it again next episode it's like a thing that the, the cw shows have never really done is like have you know every character in every episode and we revisit everything at least once an episode we always kind of have one thing focused in that episode and we kind of spend so much time on one character and then we won't really see much of the other characters at all that's not really what the show is doing currently, and I really do like that. I think that it it makes the show feel more expensive, honestly. It makes the show feel better paced, just all around, much more fun to watch. Um, now, Bart and Nora are back, and I'm expecting them to be in the next episode. I also think we're going to get Jay Garrick next episode. We're also possibly getting a, a big cameo that everybody's freaking out about, um, which we don't know for certain... If there is a cameo, it was only Cecile's actress said that there was going to be a cool character in the final. No one, like Eric Walsh or that, hasn't said anything about that. So, uh, fingers crossed we're getting something. But I'm starting to temper my expectations slightly that because it was just somebody, you know, who's on the show saying it and nothing really promotional or announcements or that, that uh, probably temper expectations a little bit. But yeah, I'm absolutely loving Flash at the moment. I think it's great. I think what they're doing is great. I've got so many questions and I can't wait to see where the show goes next. But how are you feeling about Flash at the moment? Are you liking it? Are you hating it? And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe and all of that. And I hope you have a great day.